There will be no discussion of these items unless members of the Planning Commission request specific items be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Consent calendar consists of the minutes from our last meeting. Could I have a motion? Uh, so moved. Motion by Commissioner Turley Trail, seconded by Commissioner Telesio. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that's a unanimous vote. Uh, well, the next item of business is to consider appointments to subcommittees, and I think we're trying to get some additional material for everybody. So Matt's passing that out to you right now. And what we're going to do here is we have two new subcommittees that we would like to form. Uh, so we're going to be asking for two new members. And then we have um, several of the existing subcommittees that have vacant seats. Most of them have just one vacant seat. Um, one of them, uh, the Temecula Village PDO 5 subcommittee, does have both seats vacant. But what I'd like to do is run through these uh, kind of one by one for um, volunteers or nominations. Um, and once we do that one by one, then we'll do one uh, motion and one vote uh, for all of these subcommittees at once. So um, looking at our list here, our first um, subcommittee that needs a seat filled is the Promenade Mall Project Subcommittee. Anyway. Right, so you're uh, currently uh, a member of that uh, subcommittee, John, and we're looking for one. I'd be happy uh, to do it. I have uh, Commissioner Hagel volunteering for that one. Um, the next one is the Altair Project Subcommittee. Uh, Commissioner Talisio, you again are currently on that subcommittee, and we're looking for one. I'm interested in that. Okay. So Commissioner Turley Trejo for the Altair Project Subcommittee. The Truax Hotel Subcommittee, again, Commissioner Talisio, you are currently on that subcommittee, and we are looking for one uh, new member. I, you know, prior to my participation on the Planning Commission, I was on Old Town Local Review Board for a long time. So I would like to sort of focus my efforts into the Old Town Committees for the rest of um, the commissioners around on my strength, so uh, that would leave some of the other ones wide open if that's okay with everybody. So yep. the Truex Hotel would be, would be in Old Town and would fit that category for me if that's okay. Very good, thank you. So we have Commissioner Watts for the Truex Hotel Subcommittee and the Old Town Temecula Subcommittee. Um, the next uh, one, as I mentioned, is the Temecula Village PDO 5 Subcommittee for which we need both seats to be filled, so I need two people for that one. What is, explain that one. The Temecula Village PDO 5 is um, the, it's a plan development overlay that is on Rancho California Road. So as we head out to the east on Rancho California Road, on the right-hand side or the south side of Rancho California Road, there's a set of apartments that the Planning Commission recently reviewed and approved that are up on top of the hill that have just been finished. And then there's a vacant pad down at the bottom of that hill right along uh, Rancho California Road. The plan development overlay had originally anticipated uh, a gas station, and I think it was a CVS or something along those lines, um, office space, and the developer. Scott, you want to chime in here? Yeah, there was a, initially a Smart and Final was going to be the anchor tenant there. This was an originally a 2014 application. Um, Smart and Final ended up leaving due to the economy. Um, then all the other retailers left, and the office just doesn't really make sense in that area. We'd rather see the office on the other side of the freeway. A bunch of the commercial, you know, that's really a lot of residential down there. So the developer went back, came back to us. The 160 units that are on top, they're going to take that same product, just flip it down below for 134 units. Um, we're actually getting really close to bringing it before um, the Planning Commission here probably in the next couple months. So when we were asked about this, it, so what Scott's talking about is they're coming with um, it'll be a general plan amendment and a zone change. 
uh, for that lower portion of the plan development overlay. And um, what Scott was saying, it really doesn't make sense at this point with what we've done with the Jefferson Corridor um, necessarily to have the office space there. And um, we'll get into this further when we get into the hearings. But um, basically we've had some outreach meetings with the public and the public, um, the, the nearby residents, um, initial indications are that they see that as a better fit uh, for the continued um, apartments in that location. So that's what we'll be talking about with plan development overlay five. And then of course the whole project will be coming before the planning commission in the future. So again, we're looking for two uh, committee members. Oh, I'll volunteer for that one. Okay. Great. I'd be happy to do it, too. All right. So that's the two, um, Ruiz and Hagel, on the uh, PDO 5 subcommittee, correct? Yes, thank you. Our next one is the Town Square Marketplace subcommittee. Uh, Commissioner Talisio is, again, uh, an existing member on that subcommittee. Uh, that is in Old Town, so, Gary, you may be interested in that one. Yeah, Just maybe I should... Uh, Remove myself from one of the other ones uh, if I'm going to focus on Old Town. Well, this doesn't necessarily have to be one that you're on. If you would like to stick with the other two or whatever you'd like to do, you let us know. Yeah. You know, I, I think I'd, I would like to go ahead and do that with John, and then I would like to remove myself from the Winchester Hills subcommittee. Is that okay, Stuart? Uh, we, yeah, we could make that change. So with that, then um, I have you on the Town Square Marketplace Subcommittee, and we will then need uh, a new member um, for the Winchester Hills Subcommittee. Currently, we have Commissioner Turley Trejo uh, is a member, and someone else like to join that subcommittee? Have we ever even met on that subcommittee? Um, I think we have. We have once. Um, you will be meeting on that okay. subcommittee. I'm like, what have I done on that? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'd be happy to do it if nobody else wants to. Okay. So we have Commissioner Hagel for the Winchester Hills subcommittee. Our next one is the Aurora Paw Ranch Project subcommittee. Um, currently, we do have Commissioner Watts on that uh, subcommittee, so we're looking to fill one vacant seat. I'll do that one. So Adam? Commissioner yes. Ruiz yeah. for the Aurora Ranch Project Subcommittee. Um, that leaves us now with the two... Um, Old Town. Old Town. Gary took Old Town. Um, Old Town, yeah. um, Commissioner Watts has, yeah. has uh, asked to be on that one, correct? Uh, we did that one. I, we skipped ahead on you, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so the next one would be the Municipal Code Maintenance Subcommittee, which is a brand new subcommittee. Um, and so we're looking for two. I'd like members. to do that. Do you want to explain the two new windows? Sure. Um, let's just go ahead and we'll talk about the Municipal Code Maintenance one first. And that is um, pretty much annually. Um, I, I guess we may do it more often, but um, at least once a year, uh, we're doing updates to our Municipal Code. Sometimes those updates are just driven by um, errors, believe it or not. We've been uh, incorporated since 1989, but we still find things in the municipal code that are either typos or things that when we read it, we have to ask ourselves, what does that really mean? So we have to make uh, some revisions based on that. But then on top of it, um, more recently in the last probably two or three years, uh, we have a lot of changes that are being kind of mandated to us by the state through a Senate and Assembly bills that we need to make changes to be consistent with state law. So, again, at least once a year we're doing that. It could happen more often, um, but um, that's kind of the gist of that subcommittee. And then... The Human Services Subcommittee, um, we have a Human Services Subcommittee for City Council, so for consistency, so that when we go to them with items, if we want to go to the Planning Commission first or somewhere in the process, we wanted to have a, a same uh, 
subcommittee. And so that one can deal with a variety of things, whether it's uh, homeless issues or um, another example of that would be um, we have a project that we're looking at uh, dealing with drug and alcohol treatment. So those would be the kind of human services things that we may want to come and talk to you before we come um, to the full commission for hearing. Yes, correct. Yeah. One more. Anyone interested? <laughs> I guess you know, be... I'm, that, that's fine. I'm, I'm only on two. I can go on that. I, I definitely have interest in human services as well. But, yeah, I am interested in human services. Um, but but I can I can work with Commissioner Hagel on municipal code. Sure. Yeah. And sounds like unless... you can read at night before bed, and it helps you sleep. So. <laughs> yeah. Unless there's a. Uh... Other interest, I just heard two volunteers for the Human Services Committee also. Yes, so at this point, um, unless there are object objections or someone else wanting to be on these uh, subcommittees, for the Municipal Code Maintenance Subcommittee, I have Commissioner Hagel and Commissioner Ruiz. And then for the Human Services Subcommittee, I have Commissioner Turley Trejo and Commissioner Ruiz. Yep. Everybody on board with all the appointments? So if we can have a motion to approve uh, the appointments based on what was just read by uh, Stuart. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Motion is made by Commissioner Hagel, seconded by Commissioner Ruiz. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's a unanimous vote. And if I could, Stuart, could we um, at some point in time revisit the composition of some of these so that we can even it out a little more maybe if it's if it's I know we don't meet all that often as subcommittees so it's not a tremendous workload for us but I want to make sure we have uh, a fair representation and participation in all the subcommittees so uh, if no rush on that but uh, maybe six months or so if we could review and see if there's a need to adjust or something of that nature Is okay all the commissioners mm -hmm. okay with that yeah great thank you so that takes care of item number two we will move on to the public hearing. Any person may submit written comments to the Planning Commission before a public hearing or may appear and be heard in support of or in opposition to the approval of the project at the time of the hearing. <coughs> Excuse me. If you challenge any of the projects in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing or in written correspondence delivered to the Commission Secretary at or prior to the public hearing. Any person dissatisfied with the decision of the Planning Commission may file an appeal of the Commission's decision. Said appeal must be filed within 15 calendar days after service of written notice of the decision. The appeal must be filed on the appropriate Community Development Department form and be accompanied by the appropriate filing fee. If you wish to speak on this item, please submit a speaker request to a to our secretary over here and we'll get you on board. So item number three on our agenda tonight is planning application number PA21-0641, a modification application to a development plan for facade and site changes, including a new outdoor patio area, new walkway, relocated accessible parking, and a trash enclosure for the Vail Ranch Center building located at 31845 Temecula Parkway, Building F. Can we have a staff report, please? Thank you. So as you mentioned, this is essentially a modification to the development plan for facade changes you mentioned and site improvements to the existing site, uh, which is essentially to accommodate new tenants within an existing building. The, this is a 0.75 acre parcel within a 25 acre Acre Commercial Center, and it's generally located at the southwest intersection of Temecula Parkway and Red Hawk Parkway, the building located at 31845 Temecula Parkway, Building F. And here we're looking at the site plan that depicts the overall scope of work, and this includes new paint schemes and materials, which is highlighted here, a passive outdoor space and patio, highlighted in green, Relocated ADA parking stalls, highlighted in blue. 
and then a trash enclosure above the building highlighted in red. And this is the floor plan we're looking at of building F. Um, as mentioned, it is the relocation of Cahoots pet feed that, um, that relocated within the same shopping center that spurred the subdivision of a 7,500 square foot building. Uh, the space is intended for a future restaurant. Uh, that's space number one. Space number two is for a future office or medical use. Then we have space four, it's yet to be determined. And lastly, space five will remain as the Dairy Queen. And then what we're looking at here is the initial proposal. What's highlighted in red showcases the east and south elevation that was essentially proposed to be untouched um, at the first submittal. Um, and then, uh, so that's what we have. It included only the facade changes to the north and west elevations. As mentioned, south and east elevations were to remain the same, and there was no upgraded trash enclosure. Staff work with the applicant to ensure a cohesive design was integrated throughout the entire building, and as a result, we have a building with 360-degree architecture for the building um, where they removed the southwestern architecture design and replaced it with a contemporary design. We have new integrated facades and parapets, new paint schemes, new materials, a new wood trellis on the north and west elevations, and the new trash enclosure. And here we see the existing conditions on the left side, along with the proposed uh, 3D renderings on the right-hand side. And in accordance with the California Environmental Quality Act, the proposed project has been deemed to be categorically exempt from further environmental review, and that's per section 15301, class one under existing facilities. And staff has worked with the applicant to ensure that all concerns have been addressed. The applicant concurs with the recommended conditions of approval. With that said, staff recommends planning commission approve PA 21 dash 0641 subject to the recommended conditions of approval. Staff's here to answer any questions as is the applicant, uh, which is here in the audience as well. Thank you, Jaime. Before I open the public hearing, do any questions of staff on the staff report? Start here on Commissioner Hagel. The, um, the restaurant, the tables that are outside do we know what distance there is from the end of those tables to the curb on the roadway? Yes, the, uh, there's a 15-foot setback required for the, you know, per, per the zoning here. Okay. And that is up to where the edge of the patio cover will meet. Okay. All right. Thanks. Any other questions of staff? Commissioner Turley Trail. Um, and you said Cahoots has already relocated somewhere else in that shopping center? We're currently looking at tenant improvements that they're working on to relocate within the same center. Okay. And so the good news here is we're, we don't have any loss of tenants, simply relocation right. of existing tenant and new tenants coming in. And then you have, I've noticed, are these the, the That's pallets? for you, the material sample Yay. board. Yay! That makes me them. so happy. <laughs> That's fine. I take it you don't like yellow very much. Well, <laughs> it's just kind of pops out. It kind of me, but. Thank goodness there's a million shades of yellow, so uh, we, can, we can make it through. Any yeah. other questions, Lene? No. 
Okay, with that I'll uh, open the public hearing and would like to hear from the applicant and say a few words. Answer any questions if we have any. Sure, hi, Andrew Gracie from Bricksmart Property Group, the owners of the other property. And we're excited that we're able to uh, maintain cahoots, put them into a larger space, uh, as well as bring in some additional new tenants. So excited to reinvest in the property. Great, any questions? I, I just, I have a comment. Um, one thing I hope you don't run into with a restaurant is I notice. I think pretty much all the dining is going to be outside. Um, I, I know there was room for maybe one or two tables inside. Is Temecula Parkway can be very, very noisy, and whether you may have trouble with restaurants, um, with you know that issue there, you know finding that as a good location for them. So, uh, just a just a comment. So, okay, thank you. Questions. I don't have a question, but I, I was thinking about that also because I live close by there and that Temecula Parkway is crazy. Mm -hmm. So are you saying most of the eating, would most of it is patio eating for that? No, there is there is significant indoor as well. But yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. right now, obviously, you're well aware that the trend is for a lot of outdoor right. space. Right. And of course, when the weather is nice, that's where people would prefer yeah. to be. But it'll be nice to have something new in there for sure. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any speakers? I have no request to speak. With that, I will close the public hearing and entertain discussion and uh, motion if need be. Any comments, discussion? If not? I'll move for approval. Motion is made by Commissioner Hagel. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Ruiz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's a five to zero vote. Congratulations and good luck. We're, we appreciate that. We continue to see improvements made throughout the city and we support it 100%. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Got to put my new glasses back on. Okay. Let's go to item number four, planning application number PA21-0585, home product review for planning area 18C of the Rora Pa Ranch specific plan to allow for four unique detached single family plans with three architectural styles consisting of 38 lots. And Jaime, I see you're up again for a staff report. Yes, thank you. So this project is generally located at the northeast corner of the city, uh, specifically planning area 18C of the Rora Pa uh, specific plan SP11. We have uh, direct access from the freeway uh, off of Murray to Hot Springs. And then we have a east-west major arterial connecting to the planning um, specific plan, which is Nicholas Road, and then a north to south arterial connecting to the specific plan, we have Butterfield Stage Road. Here's a snapshot of um, the grading that was taking place. Of course, it's much more advanced than that. And then just to showcase or, uh, essentially what planning area we're looking at, there's a little aerial in the arrow there. And then since 2017, the Planning Commission has approved or recommended for approval the general plan amendment, two specific plan amendments, five tentative track maps for 1,071 single family lots, a 2.3 acre park and ride and trailhead, 10.3 acres of private recreation centers, 26.4 acres of public park sites, and 13 home product reviews totaling 729 lots. We also have the what's known as a density core with 374 multifamily units. So planning area 18C is a 10.5 acre area. It consists of 38 lots with a range of homes uh, ranging from 2,062 square feet to 2,574 square feet. The lot sizes is a minimum of 5,000 square feet and we have four floor plans and three architectural styles proposed. Uh, 
And now we get into architecture for the Veteran Planning Commission. If this looks familiar, it's because you have approved in other areas of Somers Bend, including planning area 22, 23A, and 24. Uh, what we have is uh, three samples, specifically from Plan 7. Uh, it's a two-story product uh, consisting of the French cottage, which has rectangular form massing, hip roof, brick and stone accents, and architectural wood elements. The other architectural style is the prairie. Um, it has a strong emphasis on horizontal lines, hip roof as well, stone accent bases, and decorative beams. And then lastly is the farmhouse, uh, which the typical architectural style consists of front to back main gable roofs, vertical siding, uh, two by four wood appearance and window trims, as well as wood shutters. And here we start with plan four of the series of product, um, home product produced by Taylor Morrison. Uh, plan four has a three bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,062 square foot living area, three bay garage, and 136 square foot outdoor living area. And then here we have the enhanced elevations that you'll see uh, anywhere from our public roads. This includes upgraded window moulins, a trim around windows, exterior uh, wall siding accents, and then there's also a secondary color applied on the upgraded wood siding up on the roof that you see there. Plan five, this is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,207 a uh, square foot living area, a two car garage totaling about 425 square feet and 220 square feet of outdoor living area. Similarly, we have the same uh, design elements uh, visible from the street, upgraded window mullion, the trim around the windows, exterior wall and siding accents and secondary color applied on upgraded wood siding. And then plan six, this is a three bedroom, three and a half bath, 2,306 square feet of living area, a 420 square foot, two car garage, and 170 square foot outdoor living area. Same design elements on the enhanced elevations, upgraded window moulins, uh, trim around windows, exterior wall siding accents, and the secondary color applied on upgraded wood siding. Plan seven is the two-story residence with a three bedroom, three and a half bath. Uh, first floor totals 2,093 square feet. The second floor 481 square feet. It's the largest of all the uh, products at 2,574 square feet of living area. A three car garage uh, totaling 646 square feet and a, a 190 square foot outdoor living area. Similarly, with the design elements on the enhanced elevations, we have the upgraded window mullions, the trim around the windows, exterior wall siding accents, and the secondary color applied on upgraded wood siding. And then here's the Typical street view of what you would see with all the product uh, I just described. It would total uh, 12 unique homes to be developed across the site with four iterations of American farmhouse, four French cottage, and four prairie styles. Um, and there will be an assortment of architecturally compatible paint colors to be incorporated. Here we have all the colors and materials available for all homes. The colors you see represent the base colors, fascia, eaves, beams, headers, side doors and garage doors, entry doors, shutters, and siding material. Brick and stone veneers range from whitewashed brick to deep reds and multicolored stone. And then for the roofing, we have uh, material that consists of tiles with warm tones, mixed earth tones, and dark tones as seen on some of the American farmhouse and French cottage. Homes with enhanced elevations, which I just covered on the previous slides, 
um, are highlighted here in red. Um, this ensures that the quality architecture is shown on rear elevation of homes, um, which any, is anything that's visible from the street. And then we have the um, product placement plan that you're looking here that ensures a diverse layout of homes um, incorporated throughout the site so that no two styles adjacent or across from each other are alike. And then for CEQA, uh, this project is exempt under section 15162 subsequent EIR as a negative declaration. The project is consistent with previously adopted Roropa Ranch Environmental Impact Report and subsequent addendums. And with that, staff recommends the Planning Commission approve PA 210585 subject to the conditions of approval. Staff's here to answer any questions, as is the applicant from Taylor Morrison. <clears throat> thank you, Jaime. Any questions? We'll start on this side this time. If yeah, thank Mr. you. Just, just one, and I think you said at the very beginning, I was just curious how these elevations and colors correlate with the surrounding areas, but you said this is, is this exactly like some of the other ones that have been approved already? That's correct. Okay. That was my only question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Turley Trail. Uh, so is plan seven the only one that has a two-story? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought I saw. So that's crazy. We don't have very many one-stories. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't get in those one-stories in there. You don't see a lot of three-car garage either, so it's nice that that incorporates it as well. Um, the plan seven? Yes. Or what? The yeah, plan yes. seven. And then I love having all the materials. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And... The colors look great, they really do. So, thank you. No questions of staff? They do, the colors look fantastic. And just make sure we don't confuse anybody in case they ever look at the video of our meeting. Uh, Summer's Bend is the name of the development now. It used to be Rorapa Ranch. So for those that may not know, that's, that's the distinction there. Um, and we're not looking away from the people. We're trying to see the... <laughs> Okay, um, can we hear from the applicant? Would you like to say a few words, please? Answer any questions? We have, probably have a lot. <laughs> Good evening. If you could open the public hearing. Okay, I will open the public hearing. I was gonna do it after the applicant, but we will do it with the applicant. Go ahead. Good evening, Sorry. Jared Aronowitz with Taylor Morrison Homes. Uh, thank you for spending time with us tonight. Um, thank you, Jaime, for a very detailed presentation. Uh, Jaime did a great job covering the project. Uh, just want to reiterate that this architecture is a reuse of what we was approved before and is currently selling, and it's selling very well, and it's very well received. So uh, I'm here to answer some questions if you'd like. Okay. Any questions of the applicant? Yeah. Commissioner Telesio? Offhand, do you know the, the ratio of single story to, to two story? That's not, not exact. Our it's civil engineers here, if we can answer that, sure. Roughly. Um, if you could approach the, or repeat that so that for the record, please. And if you could move the mic a little closer to Yeah, me. yeah. About 20%? 15%. 15%. Can I answer your question? It's a, that's an yeah. estimate. Appreciate that. 15 sure. is better than nothing. We'll keep shooting to make that higher, but uh, <laughs> that's good. Commissioner Hagel, anything? Uh, just a comment. I spent most of my Sunday there. Oh, um, good. And my wife would like to buy one, but uh, <laughs> I said no, uh, not yet. Um, anyway, I am very, very impressed with, uh, I spent 15 years and related to traffic here, and yeah. I'm very impressed with how you handled all your road systems. Um, the roundabouts are really, really great. Um, I love how you did the curbing. Um, Good. The curbing gives you the impression that there are people right next to you walking, so you drive a little slower. Um, the roads were, very few of the roads were really straight. There, you know, there's a nice smooth curve to them. Mm -hmm. So I think you've done everything that you possibly could do to keep, uh, keep traffic calming uh, top of the top of the mind of uh, when people are driving through it and the community is a beautiful looking community so oh I'm glad to hear it mm. we're very proud of it thank you thank you 
Do we have any speakers? I have no request to speak. I will close the public hearing and uh, just, you have I just ask a question of yeah. staff real quick. So I know before we had, we did have one speaker before come when we had a hearing on Roy Poppy for us on his friend about, or being concerned about the outlets and the traffic. And so when you showed, I think on the first slide, you showed the Murrieta Hot Springs, Nicholas Road, and are those the only two? Butterfield are, State. And Butterfield, well, but going to the freeway is my point, like Murrieta Hot Springs, Nicholas, and is there a third one? Yes, uh, direct connect to the freeway would be Murrieta Hot Springs. The major north-south arterial is Butterfield right. Stage, which from there you can connect right. Rancho California, Temecula Parkway, and then the major arterial, the east-west connector is uh, Nicholas. Have we had any other concerns from homeowners regarding that? There have been zero. No? Okay. All right, thank and you. Isn't it uh, in the future you'll have Cherry Street, um, the, the connector, not Cherry Street, but on the other side, um, Date Street, um, connect up with the freeway eventually? So you can go from, to, yeah, to, um, well, to, to, well, down Winchester Road. Isn't Date Street by Harveston? Date Street's by Harveston. Right. And that's going to connect, you, gonna connect all the way through. It would get you from um, Myriad to Hot Springs, essentially. Right. be another route towards the freeway on oh. Date. Yeah. Uh, near Winchester is where that would connect, correct, Ron? Yes, so there's, we have the French Valley Phase 2, which would be the French Valley Interchange that would turn into Date Street. Date Street will eventually punch through to Murrieta Hot Springs, but of course that portion is in the control of the city of Murrieta, not us. So you would end up connecting directly into Murrieta Hot Springs from Date, as Commissioner Hagel is st stating. And then you have the uh, east-west that uh, Jaime is mentioning, the Nicholas Connection. Um, currently, that is still under plan check, so it's at 100% level. We are looking at it. However, it still needs clearance from RCWD and MWD. So the eventual extension of Nicholas will turn into the north part of the Loop Road of Somers Bend. And mm -hmm. if you go out there today, you will see that Nicholas Road is in, but it's only in through the park and ride up to the MWD aqueducts. So that is coming, and that'll probably be constructed next summer. So for the next year, the only connections are when you leave Somers Bend, you go north and hit Murrieta Hot Springs, or you go south down Butterfield Stage mm -hmm. and pick whichever arterial, arterial you want to go to. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and thanks for that comment. I was just going to add that, that Nicholas not being open yet, it's, it's going to be nice when it does open, though. I mean, I, I'm familiar with that area, regular traffic, you know, moving around over there. So... Um, It'll definitely be necessary, but I haven't noticed a ton of even backup on, on Butterfield or Margarita or Merida, um, Merida Hot Springs there. But when Nicholas does open and provide a whole nother, a whole nother opportunity to go through, I think it'll, it'll, it'll help alleviate a lot. Yeah, and I'll just add that that connection there that will go through will also have a class one bike trail. So that'll connect into the entire Somers Bend Loop. So that'll be another means of access for those that aren't driving a car. They, they could take their bikes that way. Yeah. Any other discussion? Well, I, want, I appreciate, um, Bob, your comments from being out there and what you noticed. That's great. So, because I think that has been a little bit of a concern with just more homes, right? More traffic. Traffic's always a concern here in the city. So anything that we can do to calm that, like you were saying. So I appreciate those comments. Anything further? Anyone care to move the item? I will move. Motion the made item. by Commissioner Turley Dreo. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Hagel. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that's a five to zero vote. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a great product. Keep plugging away. We love it. So I think we have one more for you. Thank you. All right. New glasses again. Planning application, this is item number five on tonight's agenda. Planning application number PA21-0586, Home Product Review for Planning Area 
A, as an atom, of the Roropa Ranch specific plan to allow for four unique detached single family plans with three architectural styles consisting of 29 lots. Staff report. Hi, May, you're up again. Thank you for that. So, once again, this project is located at the northeast corner of the city in planning area, sorry, planning area 20A of the Aurora Power Ranch Specific Plan, also known as Somers Bend. And east west, I'm sorry, uh, direct connect from the freeway is going to be Murray to Hot Springs. The east to west uh, major arterial connecting to the project site is Nicholas Road. And then north to south, major arterial will be accessed through Butterfield Stage. Here again is the grading, and the hi area highlighted in red is planning area 20A. Since 2017, the Planning Commission has approved or recommended for approval the general plan amendment. Two specific plan amendments, five tentative track maps totaling 1,071 single-family lots, a 2.3-acre park and ride and trailhead, 10.3 acres of private recreation centers, a 26.4 acre, or total of 26.4 acres of public park sites. Uh, prior to today, um, 13 home product reviews and 729 lots plus 38 from this last planning application. And a total of 370 for multifamily units uh, for what is known as the density core. And planning area 20A is a 20.4 acre area. It consists of 29 lots. Homes range from a size of 2,062 square feet to 2,574 square feet. The minimum lot size of these are a little bit larger than the previous planning area at 5,400 minimum square foot lots. And we have a total of four plans and three architectural styles for 20A. Again, here is the French cottage, which consists of rectangular form massing as a dominant architectural uh, element, hip roof, brick and stone accents, and architectural wood elements. We also have the prairie, which is Strong, has a strong emphasis on horizontal lines, hip roof, stone accent bases, decorative beams, and with a farmhouse, we have again the front to back main gable roof, vertical siding, the two, point four, uh, two by four wood appearance, window trims, and wood sh shutters. Plan four is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, 2062 square foot living area, a three-bay garage at 656 square feet and 132 square foot outdoor living area. We have uh, here the enhanced elevations for plan four. Elements include, include the upgraded window moyens, the trim around the windows, exterior wall siding accents, and the secondary color applied on upgraded wood siding. Moving on to plan five, this is the three bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,207 square foot living area, two car garage, totaling 425 square feet and a 220 square foot outdoor living area. Here you're looking at the rear elevations of plan five, which includes the upgraded window muon, the trim around the windows, the exterior wall siding accents, and the secondary color applied on of the upgraded wood siding. On plan six, this is a three bedroom, three and a half bath, 2,306 square foot living area, the two car garage, and the 170 square foot outdoor living area. This is the uh, rear view of the enhanced elevations for planning air, uh, plan six, which includes the upgraded window muons, the trim around the windows, exterior wall siding accents, and that secondary color applied on the upgraded wood siding. And now moving on to the two-story residence, this is the three-bedroom, three-and-a-half bath, 
uh, with a first floor square footage area of 2,093 square feet, second floor totaling 481 square feet, and a total of 2,574 square feet of living area. This is the three car garage floor plan and it has a 190 square foot outdoor living area. And this is what the rear of the enhanced elevations for the two story homes look like, which includes the upgraded mullions, the trim around the windows, the exterior wall and siding accents, and that secondary color applied on the upgraded wood siding. 20A, similarly to what you just approved on 18C, here is what a typical street view would look like. With a total of 12 unique homes uh, developed across the site, four iterations of American farmhouse, four of French cottage, and four of prairie styles. And then we have the assortment of architectural and compatible paint colors that will be incorporated. As you saw in the previous presentation, the same materials will be applied. We have for the American farmhouse, the French cottage, and the prairie. And here we're looking at the pro product, sorry, product placement plan. The area highlighted in red shows the homes with the enhanced elevation. And then the product placement plan ensures a div diverse layout of homes that are incorporated uh, so that no two styles are adjacent across or across from each other. For CEQA, this is exempt under section 15162. Subsequent EIR is a negative declaration. The project is consistent with the previously adopted Roy Paul Ranch environmental impact report and subsequent addendums. And with that, staff recommends the Planning Commission approve PA 210586 subject to the conditions of approval. That concludes my presentation. And staff is here to answer any questions, as is the applicant. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Go ahead. Um, can, I, can you just go back to that color slide? The one, the very beginning of the presentation that kind of shows everything. Yeah. Oops. Is it no. this one that you're no. looking for? There, that one. That, that one. Okay. Um, so they're not having the schools anymore though, right? Because they're on there. Correct. So what are they doing with that land? I mean, that's not part of this, but I was just curious. That is uh, what I believe earlier this year, um, the Planning Commission approved the density core. Right. At the 374 the multifamily units. That's right. Okay, yeah. This is a good little map to kind of see where everything is. Okay, that was my question. Thanks. Seeing no other questions, I'll open the public hearing and we'll ask the applicant if they want to say anything additional. Please come up. <laughs> Just wanted to let Commissioner Hagel know there's 24% plan twos, uh, the two story plotted. Is that correct? Oh, plan seven, two stories. 24% are plotted. So a little bit more than the previous PA. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Did anybody have any questions on this for the applicant on this one before we? No. Okay. With that, I will close the public hearing. And any discussion and potential motion. Any discussion? No discussion. I recommend approval. If you can speak into your mic, please. I recommend approval of uh, staff's recommendation. 
Motion made by Commissioner Telesio. And I'll second. Second by Commissioner Ruiz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that passes 5 to 0. 5 to 0. Um, I, I just feel compelled to say something as we look at all these um, plans tonight. Um, after watching the news over the past couple of days and seeing all the roofs and other damage in the hurricane ravaged areas of Louisiana and stuff, I bet all those planning commissioners down there are really worried about having to deal with 150 mile an hour winds instead of what they did before. Thank goodness we don't have to deal with hurricanes. Uh, I hope all those people without power and everything are able to make it through these tough times. But uh, we, 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 we are thinking of them all and hope they they can make it without any more problems. I just wanted to say that because I saw what great product you're producing up here and it really shows. It just made me think as I saw roofs going off of houses like, wow, that's crazy. So um, anyhow, I just felt compelled to say something about that. With that, commissioner reports. Do we have any commissioner reports? We'll start on our left here. Uh, on Saturday morning, I attended a uh, open house, a coffee with the mayor and um, it was very interesting there was uh, pretty much quite a few people there and uh, housing did not really come up as a big question which was good um, uh, there was some traffic issues uh, the biggest thing was what happened at Temecula Valley High School uh, a week or so ago was the main main conversation even though it technically doesn't involve the city. Um, there was a lot of requests for the city to participate in helping solve the problem. And uh, so there was a lot of viewpoints from uh, A to Z, <laughs> as you might, might guess, but it, it was, everybody was very respectful and it went very, very well. Yeah, just a couple, I just wanna thank staff. We had a couple of one-on-one -on -one meetings just kind of getting up to speed on things. So I appreciate the time on that. Um, and then, when Commissioner Hagel mentioned, you know, visiting out Summers Bend, and I know we're, we're more than able to do that on our own time, but if, if there's ever an opportunity, maybe even just as a, a newer planning commissioner, to tour some of the potential projects that are, you know, either coming up in the future or in process right now, um, I, I, no, I certainly would appreciate that opportunity. It's, it's one thing to go independently, but having some staff and some background with those, I think, could be very helpful. Commissioner Gary had requested that we do uh, one of our tours that we have done at various times throughout the years. Um, when we do them, we generally would do them uh, in the fall, say in late October, and we'll pick some of the more significant uh, projects that the commission has reviewed um, that are under construction and go take a look at those. And the purpose of it really is to go out and take a look, look at the, the good, the bad, and the ugly so that you can tell us that, yeah, we really like the way this came out, or this not so much. Next time, let's do you know something different here. Um, not so much to go out. We can't go out and talk about future projects uh, that you haven't reviewed yet. That'll have to wait. Uh, we get into Brown Act issues talking about that. Um, but yeah, we will get something on the schedule. We do have it planned. Matt's team is already looking at doing that uh, for October. So we'll definitely take the. Uh, commission out as a group along with staff and um, hit some of those key. Great, I appreciate it, thank you. Just to follow up with that, um, we have a monthly standing Somers Bend meeting and as part of that meeting we have a line item that is for getting planning, planning commissioners out for essentially a private tour of the clubhouses, the sports complex, all the, the models. Um, so if that is something that planning commissioners are interested in, we can re-engage. We actually are meeting tomorrow um, with Woodside, who's the master builder out there, and we can get something set up if you would like to. Yeah, I, I don't know that I can make tomorrow, but I would definitely, you know. No, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd yeah. be in the future. We'd get something uh, yeah. for, you know, two commissioners at once would be the max, but we can get people out there to start touring. Yeah, I, I would love that opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I've already talked to Luke about that, and, and I'm definitely interested. I didn't go inside anything. We weren't, didn't want to tempt my wife too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we have consensus on that, so thank you for... Yeah, we'll get it set that. up with uh, Woodside. 
Yeah, I would definitely be interested in that also. Um, I attended the Quality of Life Master Plan, the first meeting last Thursday, and um, it was great. It was, um, how many people are on that? I didn't total them. There's uh, 22. 22 uh, at-large members, and then Mayor Edwards and Mayor Pro Tem Ron chair the meeting. Right. So 24 total. So we all kind of sat in a... Horseshoe. Horseshoe, that was the <laughs> word I wanted. Um, and did some small group work too. And anyway, I felt like it was beneficial. And so we we're gonna be meeting once a month, basically, for the next few months and working on that plan. So oh, yeah. I think it's um, worthwhile. Good to hear, we got a lot of good feedback too. Any other reports? Seeing none, move on to commission subcommittees. Did we have any subcommittee meetings since we met? So we can skip through that one. Community Development Director, Stuart. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Mr. Public Works Director. Three, <laughs> three separate items. Uh, we started our slurry seal project throughout some neighborhoods up in the Roarpaw Hills area, Winchester, Nicholas. So we started our annual slurry seal. Uh, number two for here in Old Town, the Fifth Street, you know, behind, uh, in front of the Gambling Cowboy, behind Texas Lills and Small Barn. That street has been problematic. We're starting construction on that. We're going to make it Old Town style, rolled curb and gutter, put the sidewalk in, fix the asphalt issues and the parking issues over there. So we're starting on that um, next month. And then lastly, we started our sign replacement program, and that means that we're changing out all of the overhead signs from the electric illuminated. And you know how you've seen a lot of cracked signs. All that's coming out and we're replacing it with a reflective uh, sign marker. So it'll be lit up by the lights, whether it's traffic signal, car lights or whatever, it's gonna be much cheaper as well as more um, longer lasting. And so we started on that. And if you wanna take a look at them, they've been installed so far. We're gonna do it citywide. But if you head up Yanez, starting at Santiago, going all the way to Winchester. All those signs have been replaced. And so you'll see the quality of the sign and would love your feedback. On so, Inez. On Inez, that whole corridor from Santiago to Winchester. So speaking of signs, mm -hmm. I saw a sign that was down, Avenida de Misiones. Mm -hmm. um, looks like, I don't know, a car ran into it or something. So oh, okay. right off of Temecula Parkway, that sign, Avenida de Misiones. I'll get it. I just saw that and, today. And just so I, I'm clear, when I say the reflective signs have been replaced, I'm talking about the green, hey, this is Rancho Cal, the, the ones that sit on the traffic lines, yeah, the traffic traffic signal lights, uh, signs. Oh. The green ones. Right, 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 right. Okay. Those, those are the ones. But I will take note of okay. the Avenida Thank the you. Things. And that was it. Thanks, Ron. Mm -hmm. And with that, we'll adjourn the meeting. I have to let you know I won't be here at the next meeting. We'll be out of town. Got that? So, moving our son I see and Stuart family writing to Maine. That down. Can you go any further, really? <laughs> Does he want to get away from his mom? What the heck? With that, uh, we will adjourn the meeting until Wednesday, September 15th. So moved. M motion by Commissioner Telesio and seconded by me. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you.